So this list was originally a lot longer, but I kind of started going off onto little mini tangents in my brain. And I was like, just focus and narrow it down. So I narrowed it down to five. Hi, hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex, and today we are talking about my winter aesthetic reading. So I feel like when people say their own aesthetic, it's um, extremely personal to the person, which is, you know, I think kind of the point. So let me describe my winter aesthetic for you. When I think of winter books, I my brain does not go to holiday reads or, or romance. So um, if that is your winter aesthetic, I'm, I'm very happy for you, but that is not mine. Um, if you watch the Maybe series for December, I kind of talked about my winter aesthetic there, but um, today that's all we're talking about. My winter aesthetic, like, uh, there needs to be snow, and I really want it to be either like survival-esque or um, thriller murder mystery type thing. It is kind of a bonus if it has Christmas tied into it, but none of the books I'm going to talk to you today are qualify as holiday reading. Yeah, I would, I would definitely describe my winter aesthetic as like snowy, barren secluded, deadly, that type of thing. So um, if that is also your winter aesthetic reading, um, I think you might enjoy this post. Um, and if that's not your winter aesthetic, uh, you might enjoy it anyway. <laughs> so I narrowed it down to five books because I really just, I didn't want to talk your ear off about books because I feel like I do that every week anyway. So we're just going to talk about my five favorite winter aesthetic books. These are not in any specific order, so let's just go ahead and start with The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. This book had all of the winter aesthetic vibes that I wanted. Okay, we're in an old sanatorium that's been converted into a hotel. Okay, first off, just, I think it's in the French Alps, I believe, and they get snowed in, like, immediately fits the brief perfectly. Okay. Um, our main female character is a detective, but she's gone on leave for her mental health. And so we have a little bit of an unreliable narrator happening there. Suddenly people at the hotel, um, start disappearing. And the first person that disappears is actually connected to her brother. That's kind of the whole reason that she's at the hotel is to see him and his fiance and kind of reconcile a uh, sordid past between the two of them. And so upon her arrival, she finds out that the fiance is missing. And it kind of spirals into a murder mystery thriller with this sort of winter-esque survivalist edge to it. Wow. Okay, I don't really know what I was expecting when I picked up this book, but it exceeded all of my expectations. Like, when I get to around this time of year, show me a cover that like depicts winter isolation, I'm gonna read it. You know, sometimes they're not good and sometimes they are. And that's just a gamble I'm, real, I'm willing to take. And this gamble paid off. I mean, this book, the cover of this book sold me immediately. And then within the first couple of pages, I was hooked into this storyline. It just kept getting darker and darker and more twisted the more we got into it. And I absolutely loved the female main character, um, Detective, because she was not perfect. She had a lot of issues. She had familial issues. She had mental health issues. She was really struggling. And throughout the whole novel, she was struggling to with herself, like even sitting here being like, is this real or am I overreacting? Am I cut out to do this? Like, am I going to make it through this? Like, it just ticked all the boxes, okay? This book definitely hit my winter aesthetic right on the head. Like, read this one. This is actually part of a series that I haven't continued, but I, I really want to. Um, I'm just, I'm terrified to keep going with it because this book was so good then I'm really afraid that the next book is not going to live up to the hype that this one gave me. So yeah, read this one. The next book I'm going to talk about today is Shiver by Allie Reynolds. 
I've talked about this book before y'all. I have talked about this book. I think it was in like my 2021 top reads. This was like one of the first books I read in 2021 and it just like kicked off my year. It was terrific. This fits the winter aesthetic brief perfectly also. I mean the cover again. This was one of those like yeah snag me with the cover because this is what my winter aesthetic is. Isolation, snow, there's nobody else on that mountain but her. So basically there's a group of professional snowboarders and we kind of had like a split um, timeline here. So we're getting a story of when all these professional snowboarders were on the mountain training together when they're in their um, late teens, early twenties. Um, and then what's happening to them now about 15 years later, I think it is. Um, so when they're on the mountain, when they're training, in the first timeline they there's there's a mix of genders there's male professional snowboarders and female professional snowboarders and they're basically all up on this mountain doing training together for the next round of competitions and things like that they spend all their time with each other and getting to know each other there's a lot of um, dynamics here I would say frenemy dynamics um, competitive dynamic there's also a lot of um, love interest happening between various people in this group and so we have this storyline building. And then on the other part of the storyline, we find out immediately that one of the snowboarders in the original group goes missing on that mountain. The snowboarders that are left decide we're going to go up to the mountain one last time and have like a vigil or something um, 15 years later to commemorate this team member that we lost. There's a lot of dynamics here that I won't really get into, but uh, I mean, everyone's really close. And then after this one snowboarder disappeared, like everyone kind of fell off. So this is like the first time that they're all seeing each other since that happened. So they go up there and when they get up there, um, they get stranded by a snowstorm and they find out they don't know who organized the get together. I mean, it's kind of like that Spider-Man meme where they're all like, it was you. No, it was you. No one knows how the um, invitations got sent out or why exactly they're there. Um, and then it becomes revealed that the reason they've been gathered together is because someone in the group knows how that snowboarder ended up missing on the mountain. So we're splitting the timelines between what really happened on the mountain between these snowboarders and how this one snow snowboarder ended up missing and them all trapped together um, on the mountain trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together and trying to get out of there alive basically. It was just a whirlwind from start to finish like I know that was a really long setup and that sounded like really complicated but the way that this book was put together was just brilliant. I couldn't put it down. It just drove straight through for me. The pace was unrelenting. There was so much dynamic happening here between the characters. We have old flames and new flames and siblings and rivalries. And there was just so much happening here. And I really loved getting the female athletic perspective of the story. I, I just, it was great. And the ending... Never predicted. Never, never could have guessed. Like, the whole time we're going through the book, I'm like trying to piece together everything and I'm like, I've got it figured out. Time and time again, I was wrong. Throughout the whole book, I couldn't figure it out. And then the last pages of the epilogue just threw me. If you read this book, promise me you'll read the epilogue, okay? Just promise me you will. It's like three pages. All right, you're going to you're going to skip 3 pages and miss the biggest like twist of the book. No, please read the epilogue, okay? I can't recommend this one enough. The next book I'm going to talk to you about is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. I read this one a little bit ago, but again, the cover really is the aesthetic that we're looking for. And when I read the blurb for this book, I was like, yeah. We ended up reading this for my book club, I think, and I'm pretty sure everyone um enjoyed it. So it's a group of friends that all met in college and every year they get together on like Christmas, Christmas to New Year's um, on like, like a little getaway vacation. 
So this is not like the first one. This is, I don't know, one of many that they've done together. And they decide to go rent like like a property, I guess you would say. Because like there's, there's a big main building where like they spend a lot of their time together and they can like cook and hang out and stuff. And then they each have their own little like cabins that they're staying in. So like they can be together most of the time, but they also can be apart from each other. So it's almost like a little community that they've um, rented out to spend the week at. And um, there's lots of little things that they sign up to do, like hunting, hunting party, <laughs> and um, some other things like touristy type things to do. Eventually they get snowed in. Everyone starts spilling old secrets. There's a lot of animosity in the group. Um, this is like a perfect example of like, not everyone is meant to stay friends forever. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, sometimes there's just too much bad blood between people that I would definitely say this is that friend group where it's like, y'all should have just dispersed, um, after college and said, see ya never again and just moved on with your lives. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of undercurrent in this book with this friend group and, um, eventually one of them ends up dead and it spirals into a whodunit mystery thriller. There is like this nice little undercurrent storyline happening in this book that I really did not expect. But this really hits the winter aesthetic brief for me. We're in like the mountains. It's snowy. They get stuck there. There's a snowstorm. Someone ends up dead. Like perfect, perfect winter aesthetic for me. Okay, so this one ticked a lot of boxes really quick read. It was really easy to enjoy. Um, I know some people said the plot line was maybe a little bit muddied and complex, but um, it worked for me. So um, it, also if you haven't read Lucy Foley, um, definitely give Lucy Foley a look if you enjoy mystery thrillers and things like if you enjoy Ruth Ware, you would like Lucy Foley. Yeah, this one hit my winter aesthetic pretty well. It wasn't my favorite of this list, but it was definitely intriguing. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Silent Girls by Eric Rickstad. Um, I read this book a long time ago, and I still think about it. Like, that's brilliant writing to me. This is technically part of a series. I think it's um, Canaan Crime. This is the second book. When I picked it up, I didn't realize... It was part of a series. So I read it without reading the first book. Didn't have any issues with it. So it's definitely one of those books I think you can read out of order. I did read the third book and um, I, I have it in the back of my head to go and read the first book, but um, I don't know. <laughs> I read the, this one and then I read the third one in the series and I still, this one was a lot better than the third one for me. So I, I still lean heavily on this book. So just picture Vermont in the winter with a serial killer on the loose. And we have a main character detective who is struggling with PTSD, sobriety, chronic pain. Um, he's just got a lot going on. And on top of this, he has um, a lot of trauma from his previous cases and stuff that he's just not working through that well. It's definitely one of those things where it's like, bro, you, you just need to retire and get therapy. But he doesn't, obviously, because he's going to solve this crime. This was very, this was not secluded like the other reads were. This was talking about Vermont. So it is kind of like, um, you know, there are places in Vermont that are pretty sparse. You know, it's just a lot of forest and things. So it wasn't like bustling in the city or anything like that. But there, there was, it, we weren't dealing with like a tight knit cast that was like trapped on a mountain or something like that. So this one does have a little bit more of a wider net to it. Um, I loved it. <laughs> the way that, um, the main character was written, I just, I wanted more. I wanted all of it. Like, his story, it was so compelling the way that it was all put together. Um, we also get 
Um, this is one of those books that's like really kind of um, graphic. If you don't like graphic murder novels, I would definitely say skip this one because it does get graphic at times. But uh, for me, it really worked. The winter aesthetic, it was very light on winter aesthetic, but again, it's like it's Vermont in the winter with repeating blizzards. People don't get stuck anywhere, but this book always sticks out in my head when I think of winter aesthetic. So if you like serial killer thrillers, you like kind of a winterish aesthetic and you don't mind graphic writing this check this one out okay okay the last book I'm going to talk to you about today is The Mountain Between Us by Charles Martin I feel like most people know what this book is about because it was turned into a film starring Kate Winslet and Idris Elba let me just tell you um one the book is better <laughs> And two, um, the movie does not follow the plot of the book as well as I wanted it to. Now, if you watch the movie on its own, Idris Elba and Kate Winslet, really just a great dynamic. I really did like the movie, but in comparison to the book, I liked the book better. Okay, so you're sitting here thinking like, Alex, this does not really match the winter aesthetic of your other books on this list. Yeah, this really dips more into survivalist style instead of like the murder mystery aesthetic that the other books have. This, this really leans heavily into survivalist, but they're on a mountain in a blizzard, stranded. I mean, it ticks a lot of the same boxes that the other books tick. So these two people don't, they don't know each other. They both need to get home, um, for various reasons. The regular plane that they're supposed to board is grounded due to weather. They both end up chartering this private plane to fly them to their destination. In the midst of flying them to their destination, their pilot has a unprecedented heart attack, crashes their plane into a snow covered mountain. Our female main character is injured. Our male main character is a doctor, but he's also kind of like a little bit of a wilderness guy. Like he knows a little bit about getting around and stuff. And basically they conclude they have to get off the mountain uh, to safety. No one knows where, they're, where they are. There wasn't a flight plan chartered for whatever reason. And there's no black box in the plane. Or if there is one, it's gone. So basically they have to get off the mountain to safety with one of them being um, injured, the other one having minimal uh, survivalist skills. So the story of them getting um, to safety is to me not the highlight of this book. The highlight of this book is definitely the male main character's story. His backstory broke me. I was not expecting this book to be as hard hitting and heart wrenching and sad as it was, but it was okay. When you go into reading this book, um, it's not high action. It's not high survivalist. It is two people lost in their own stories coming together to survive. Like I said, this, I, I hesitated putting this on the list because this does not really like match the other books, but you know, it's, it's my list and I'll add it if I want to. <laughs> and I can't help not talk about this book because it really blew me away. It really just exceeded my expectations and the movie did not do the storyline justice. It really didn't. Um, so if you like survivalist type books, uh, winter survivalist ones, especially this one was just something completely different from the normal survivalist type books that I read. It was phenomenal. All right. Check this one out. Okay. That's all I have for you guys today. That is my five top winter aesthetic novels. Um, so yeah, my winter aesthetic is kind of just like barren, snow-trapped, a thriller-ish. <laughs> if you made it this far, make sure to hit all the buttons down below so you know when I'm posting. I post every week and talk all about books on my channel. 
Tell me about your winter aesthetic and what you're reading this winter. My winter aesthetic will bleed all the way into January, so don't be surprised if the January maybes looks a lot like the December maybes. Like, I pour into the winter aesthetic through January too. If you have any recommendations for me or anything you want me to talk about on my channel, drop me a comment. And other than that, I will see you guys next time. Bye!